Okay, thank you, Howard. Uh, today is Brain and Skull Base Day. Welcome to Brain and Skull Base Day. Uh, so uh, we're going to be talking about the skull base now and the temporal bone. Uh, I'm going to talk first about it, anatomy, and then we'll talk about pathology. Uh, I normally have about four hours of temporal bone pathology that I give my residents and fellows every year. So I've just picked a couple of areas with important differentials uh, in, in the anatomy that's good to talk about. Uh, so first I'm going to go over the normal anatomy of the temporal bone and the skull base and its relationship to each other. And then we'll talk a little bit about imaging techniques, mostly CT and MR, uh, that we use for the temporal bone. So there are different ways to think about the skull base. We can think about it like we do the brain, like an anterior, a middle, and a posterior cranial fossa. And the anterior and the middle parts on bottom are lumpy bumpy, and that's where we see those hemorrhagic contusions that Dr. Hudgens was talking about in the trauma a couple days ago. Uh, or we can think about the individual bones and the paired frontal, parietal, and temporal bones and the unpaired ethmoid, sphenoid, and occipital bones. Uh, so we're going to be focusing over here laterally on the temporal bone today in this section. And then later this afternoon, we'll talk more about the skull base and the important cranial nerves that go through it. So the temporal bone has five different important segments, and we'll go through each of these at, and look at their important anatomy and what's at each location. So first we have the squamous portion. So here in pink, that's the lateral part of the suprazygomatic masticator space. Remember that masticator space has an infratemporal fossa or nasopharyngeal portion that's below the zygomatic arch. And then it has the temporal fossa or suprazygomatic part that goes up over the lateral skull. And here on the inside of the skull, we see that lateral portion right there. So that's the squamous portion of the temporal bone. Then we have a mastoid portion, the mastoid tip that develops after birth, and it has some important uh, anatomic landmarks on imaging. So we have the middle ear cavity, where we like to see our ice cream cone. We want to see a nice ice cream cone on every axial CT of the temporal bone. There's the opening right here, aditus ad antrum, or opening to the cave, where it's narrowed posterior to the ice cream cone. And then the mastoid antrum 